What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Olo here. Mostly in this video we'll be talking about Scream 7, but before I get into Scream 7, we're going to go over a small update, a tidbit about The Purge 6, a movie that doesn't seem to be able to get off the ground due to Universal having some doubt, according to James DeMonico. He sat down with Collider recently and went over The Purge 6 and what it could be, or what it would be if it were to happen. He said, Purge 6 is my way of looking at the country now. I grew up watching Logan's Run and Soylent Green and John Carpenter and George Romero whose socio-political messaging was within the films. They were smuggling ideas into the film. So for me, for six, I was extra extrapolating on the Discord and taking it to its furthest as far as you can take that idea of what's going on, I feel, in the country and the political landscape. And it's a broken America we're remapping. The Purge 6 is about the remapping of America based on ideology, sexuality, and religion so that the state's are broken down you have your black state you have your gay state you have your white evangelical state and it's really a broken country now here's my thing as strange as you could argue that sounds would it be too unrealistic and my thought on that is no we are so divided so against each other and so many people they don't want to sit down and have any type of common ground. We all are comfortable being nasty and hateful and just overall closed minded to one another. I'm guilty of that myself. I know many of you could be, if you want to be honest with yourself, you're guilty of that as well. So I think this could translate into a very thought provoking entry of the Purge franchise. But it would appear as though this movie is struggling with finances. I can I can count on my hand how many other projects have had this issue in the past. I'm sure certain you can, too. I would love to see this script come to life. I think it has potential to be one. Again, the most thought provoking entries of the purge today. It would be very timely given the climate we live in in our country. If you're an American anyway, uh, or if you just live in the world, I should say, because I know American Americans aren't the only ones going through this type of uh, treatment when it comes to all of this division in their nation. But jumping into Scream 7, Scream 7, apparently, according to KDM Monsters, is going to start filming in early 2024. This came from a tweet over on Twitter when asked if they had heard anything about Scream 7. And they responded by simply stating it should start filming in early 2024 uh, or that it would be filming in early 2024, I guess, according to what they've heard. Here's my thing. If it's filming in early 2024, I could only anticipate that we would get it in late 2024. Something similar to the vein of how the Halloween trilogy went from the 2018 film shooting in 2018 and then that film releasing that same year and then also having Halloween ends filming and releasing in the same year. Kills didn't do that due to the pandemic, I believe, but you get the gist. So when it comes to Scream 7 filming in early 2024, I think that is a strong possibility, but it also is contradicting, of course, the rumor from Sinistelf that, well, I, I guess it isn't contradicting it because the key word there was it could. It could start filming sometime this year if the SGA strike doesn't happen. So is this them anticipating that strike or is it coming down to the scheduling conflicts? Because from what I'm seeing online, it would appear that according to insiders, people, again, I would argue are more reliable than me better track record scheduling seems to be the issue right now with screen seven not whether or not it's happening just when can we shoot this without it creating any hiccups schedule wise you have jenna ortega and her commitments to wednesday jasmine brown and her commitments to yellow jacket season three scheduling there and then of course with the radio silence project that's shooting with melissa barrera uh dracula's daughter is the working title i believe and it's a universal horror picture that they are working on right now. In between that, Mason is is tied up with a A24 movie, Y2K, I believe. So everybody is just booked. Everybody's very busy. I've seen all these rumors also about casting, like Courtney Cox being a part of the cast. But then allegedly she's not a part of the cast because she's waiting for the script to see if it is up to her standards, I guess. And when it comes down to the screenplay... My biggest issue or my biggest concern going into these screen movies is not going to be do we have X, Y, A, B, C of legacy stars back? 
it will be, okay, they're back, nice. How are you going to use them? If you're not going to use them in a manner that I think is sufficient enough to warrant their inclusion, get them out of here. They don't need to be here. We live in a fandom state that is just content with getting more. We want quantity. Quantity is superseding quality. We don't care how it's served. We don't care if it's seasoned or not. Like I stated in another Sydney video of mine, people just seem to obsess over quantity more so than quality. Now, I don't think that Gail Weathers was mishandled in Scream 6. I, you could argue that, yes, she was just underutilized if you wanted more for sure. That's fair. But I don't think she was mishandled. I think a mishandling of Miss Weathers would be her just showing up, not really too involved in the plot in terms of helping unravel who Ghostface is like she is. And she literally is just showing up to report the news. You know, that's something that I could argue has never happened in any of the Scream movies where she's simply just shown up to report the news. In Scream 6, she's right along the ride trying to uncover who Ghostface is. Scream 5 doing the same thing. Now, of course, that's at the tail end of the movie, but you get the gist. Scream 4, same thing. Scream 3, definitely, with her and Dewey carrying the first half of the act, or first, first couple of acts of that entry. Scream 2, hell yes for there. Scream 1, the original. The person who was adamant that Cotton Weary was innocent and that the killer is still out there. They have been using Gail Weathers just right and in the same ways, you could argue, for six movies now. Sure, six is a little bit under utilization of her. But if you were to write Gail Weathers in into Scream 7 and she's just showing up to report the news, I could say you've you've mishandled Gail Weathers. You've done a disservice to the character. She's someone who's always been very prevalent to tracking down who the killer is, and you should keep that streak up. Same thing with Sydney Prescott. If you don't have anything for Sydney Prescott to do, just don't write her in because she's Sydney Prescott and because fans wanted her back. Who cares if the fans wanted her back? The fans wanting her back, that's only at the bottom. When you're the one that's going to have to bring this story to life, you need to recognize, am I the person qualified to do this or not? If not, don't do it. Take the backlash. <laughs> Let someone else who's more qualified write the story for Sidney Prescott. And with all the talks I'm seeing online about Matthew Lillard supposedly having something to say about being a part of Scream 7, if he's a part of Scream 7, so be it. He can be a part of Scream 7. My thing is, again, I'm not against Stu Mocker returning. I'm against Stu Mocker being revealed as alive. I don't think there's going to be any plausible way that won't unravel the story down a rabbit hole of plot holes and things that just aren't aligned logic-wise, and it's going to be leaving the movie with a one-star rating for a lot of people. Shout out to you. You know who you are. But... Scream 7 filming in early 2024. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it's probably due to the looming SGA strike. But you guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.